Hey guys, hope you are all well. Um, this is going to be a long one today, so if you're in, you're in. If you're not, completely understand, not everyone will be interested in this, but I know that there are a lot of people that are. Um, and, you know, I'm ready now to share my story. Um, it's taken a long time for me to be ready. It's taken a lot of effort for me to even get dressed today, put some makeup on, you know, it, it's it's taken everything I've got to do that. Um, whilst I film this video, you know, it's not gonna be like, like my normal videos. I've set it up on a tripod because I know I can't physically sit there for that long with my hand out. Um, I, I will stop because I need to refer back to things because I don't want to miss anything out. Like I want to tell a full story. So it again, it's not going to be all smoothly edited. I'm going to have to put things together as I chop and change as I do refer back. So it's not going to be like my standard video, shall we say. Um, I know a lot of you know that I've recently been in hospital. Um, it was an infection that put me there. Obviously can't be helped, but what could have been helped is um, apparently big infections like that can be brought on through stress when you end up with a low immune system. So, um, you know, I, I can't say 100% that that's what put me in hospital, but I've been under immense stress um, financially for the past year. And um, today I'm going to tell my story from start to finish about that. And um, I hope that this will help people moving forward so that they never have to go through what I went through. Um, and I hope that there's people out there who can relate who aren't strong enough yet to share their tale, but have had a similar tale and this can help them as well. So I'll get into it. Um, I, if you can see the flowers in the background, these are predominantly like from my LinkedIn friends um, that they've sent me while I've been in hospital, which is just, amazing like you know when you don't expect that and then it come it happens and you're just like wow people are amazing um so anyway let's get into it so this all started really when uh, probably around a year ago we've always used a wine agent giuseppe with sourcing our wines um you know the the language barrier and the fact that we're not always in italy he was kind of our go between go between between us and the winery um he was the one who introduced us to the winery all those years ago. He's always been great. Like, and just to be blunt, I will name and shame everyone throughout this tale. Every culprit will be named. Um, I'm not kind of trying to hide anyone's identity. Like, it's time that these people were called out. So, Giuseppe Topper, um, he was very much our kind of go between between us and the winery. So, for years, it was very smooth sailing. Fine, we had a great relationship with him. And then I don't know what happened, um, but he must have gotten himself into some kind of financial difficulty. And at which point he took money off us and did not pay that money to the winery. So we were never able to get our wine um, that we had paid for in full. Now, I don't know if you know much about like the Italian law system, but let's just say it's like, <laughs> it's a free for all. Um, we've tried, we've tried our options legally in terms of sending letters, trying to take him to court, um, mediation. We've tried a lot, um, and we will try more when we have more money. But right now, cash flow isn't there to even try and fight Giuseppe any further than we already had. Have, um, what we can do obviously is is try and make sure that no one ever goes through this again. Um, basically, it lost our cash. You know, we always kind of had a, let's just say about like 60 grand cash buffer within the business. So when Giuseppe stole our money and didn't pay the winery, we obviously still needed the wine. Now the winery couldn't give us that wine because it was under his name, not ours, even though it's our product, our brand. Um, so they had to start the process again from scratch, which was going to be another three months. So they would have to start the wine process again, but they would also have to charge us again. So that ate massively into our cash reserves of, you know, 60 grand that was always a buffer for marketing, for staffing, for growth, was gone because we needed to rebuy our wine that we'd already paid for because of Giuseppe stealing from us. Um, so that was kind of 
what happened originally and what led to this because I've would think you know I'm a hundred percent shareholder and I wanted to stick that out as long as humanly possible I didn't want to go and on board on board an investor until I knew that you know I'd get what it was worth for those shares so I wanted to hold out as long as possible without onboarding an investor because of Giuseppe eating up our cash reserves I then had to think okay well you know there's no cash flow now for this and um, I am gonna have to start looking at investment so my first thought was actually a crowdfund and um, you know people have asked me multiple times oh can I invest five grand here can I invest ten grand there and um, can I you know why don't you do a crowdfund I'll put a couple of grand in so I, I, I knew there was scope for that I know there's interest in the brand in that way um, but again I just wanted to hold out until the business was just looking so great on paper um, and anyway I, I started having these conversations and then a friend of mine introduced me to a guy who he claimed was you know this big investor um big businessman and you know was potentially interested in speaking to me about think now i didn't really know at the time like what that was going to entail i didn't know if that was going to be you know investment or you know purchasing offers what i'd actually been told was oh they've got shares in hard rock cafe um so or they have um what's the word like a few franchises of hard rock cafe so if anything they could just you know get think in hard rock cafe so obviously i'm like wow absolutely that would be so amazing especially as we've just launched in the us um, this time last year, I was just planning my trip to the US. So I was like, wow, that would be amazing. So I was introduced to him, seemed like the most lovely guy, um, sent samples to everyone, they loved it. And they were like, yeah, we're gonna help you get in with the hard rock, etc." But then they brought another proposition to the table and they said, you know, we would really like to invest in this business. Like we see it going places, we can you, we can help. They, they were basically building this big, massively complex in Miami which was um a bit like imagine like a Trafford Centre like that vibe it's, there's loads of hotels restaurants bars um and like shops as well so they were saying you know we can just walk you into that and that will be no issue they were also saying um oh we, we, we've just bought an island um Dunk Island in Australia we've just bought it it's going to be amazing you can be the only bubbly on the whole island so as you can imagine I was like wow this is it you know I, I've made it so after months and months of negotiations back and forth to get to a place that you know we were both happy with we basically had the deal like signed off and ready to go in October last year so from that point I was I was getting really kind of antsy because it was approaching Black Friday I needed more stock and I did not have the cash flow for more stock so I was like you know is this deal going to be done in time is is like what what can I do to help push this forward you know we've basically signed everything off now and they were being really pedantic on certain things like wording like oh that's too much of a UK term for us and things like that and I just thought okay fine so what they did then is they started saying, oh, it's, it looks like the funding might not be through in time for Black Friday. So can you take some loans off people that you know and trust? Um, and then obviously we'll pay them back by the 9th of December max. Get, little, get one page agreement signed with them and we'll make sure that they're paid back by the 9th of December. So I was all like, okay, no problem. So that's what we did. Um, I won't name the people that have lent me money but some of them are on here and I've classed them as um family and friends that are like family like without them through this I don't think I'd even be able to talk to the camera right now I'd probably just be in a hospital bed like I, I don't even know I hate to think without them where I'll be but um yeah so that's what I did I lent money off people um under the promise that um, I would have that money back by the 9th of December. 9th of December came and went. Um, we finally signed off the deal right before Christmas. And so, you know, we signed the deal within a week, the money's supposed to be in, the money was not in. Um, you know, we had constant communication, daily contact, and every day there was a new lie. 
So it was like, it. when I think of it, it's like the amount of actual emotional turmoil, the, the gaslighting of it. You know, every time I started to get curious and ask a question, it was like, they'd be so patronizing and they'd have an answer for everything. And there was a new lie. And I was constantly questioning what's going on, what's happening here. Um, this is, you know, way supposed to be done, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we were told there was put those days when he was like, I've sent the transfer. The transfer has been sent. It'll arrive with him on. Oh, sorry, Kath, the bank rejected it. I have to go in. I have to sign a document with the bank. Um, they blame there's a company called Centaur. Uh, I won't mention the name of staff there, but they continuously blamed her. They were like, oh, she's on holiday again. Oh, she's ignored me. Oh, I've got a call with her Monday. Oh, so this whole time, like, my blame almost lied with Centaur. Like, what an incompetent firm. Why can they not just make a transfer? Like, surely that's not a big deal. Um, but then, you know, they, they'd scare you off and they, you know, you were that terrified that you wouldn't get the money or you'd lose the deal that you wouldn't contact anyone and actually say like, hi, Centaur, is this actually true? Or is this a full blown lie? Um, so yeah, it was, it was just like a living nightmare. It went on for months. I lost sleep. Obviously, I, as it was approaching February, I'm now two months overdue in paying people back. Not only that, he's told me because we really needed a van because the amount of deliveries we now have, we couldn't, we couldn't continue doing it in cars and we really needed a van and we wanted it for branding purposes anyway. So, you know, he said to us, oh yeah, go and buy a van, no problem. Um, and obviously we bought a van and the money didn't ever come. So, um, yeah. That, you know, we were just getting ourselves into more and more debt. The cash flow wasn't there. I, I was still having to pay staff uh, and I couldn't pay for marketing to actually get any sales in. So it was just like a big loop nightmare. Um, and I think it's the first time that I've ever not really like been able to sleep for a long period of time. The thing what always kind of kept me there, I guess, was that they were so ballsy in their approach. Like, I would say, right, you need to speak to the board. Um, so I've got a few people on my board, I think. And I was like, you need to speak to them. He'd speak to them. They'd believe him. I'd believe him. Everyone believed him. You know, literally all of us. There wasn't one of us who thought that this man was what he is, which is an absolute fraudster. Um, but nobody thought that. Nobody, you know, he's such a good salesman. He's so good at lying. He's so good at talking you off a cliff. He's so good at, you know, everything that he was doing. He was like the perfect person for the job. Um, and you know, when you just think like, am I actually on the set of a Netflix documentary here? Is this a movie set? Is this real life? Because surely this can't be happening to me. The legal fees on my end were just creeping up and up and up and up and up. They would speak to me so patronizing. Now, this is what I'm gonna need you to do, Kath. This is what they'd say to me in this you know, manner, like what I need you to do. No, what I need you to do is pay me the money you've promised me before you drive my business into the ground. That's what I need you to do. Um, but again, for months, it was like, you wouldn't say or do anything for fear that you know, you'd lose the deal. And what I didn't actually realize is the deal was never, ever, ever gonna happen. I guess the whole point of the story is to tell you that they're not investors. Maybe at one point in their life they were. Maybe they had um, a good career at one point in their life, which has enabled them to do this because they've had some good connections. Um, but what they actually are, are a Ponzi scheme in which I believe that the money that they are getting is just being embezzled personally. I found um, previous lawsuits against them these guys have thousands probably um, businesses that they've like opened and closed down. Um, originally they were trading under Upsense Capital and then that someone tried suing them. So they closed and they opened Audien Capital. You know what the funny thing is? Um, their slogan is actually de-risk the entertainment sector. I think that's what it's called, de-risk. Fraudulent man, men 
taking people's money and pretending to give people money. Like, how are you going to say de-risk the entertainment center? It's just so funny that that's their um, tagline. So when the penny finally dropped for me, um, and I think for months in the back of my mind, subconsciously, I did kind of know like this isn't happening. But I was still in the denial phase because I thought like, for what reason? It's not like he was taking money off me. I understand when you're taking money off people, you know, well, I don't understand. It's not something I'd ever do. But you know what I mean? At least like that's the outcome. You're going to get money off people. What was he getting off pretending to invest in my business other than running my business into the ground from a cash flow perspective? And I've been gaslit every step of the way throughout this whole thing. Um, I'm made to believe like I'm some kind of, you know, a, a, what what do you mean? Like, of course the money's coming. Like, hello, it, we're in May now. This was meant to happen in October. At what point do I understand that it's just not going to happen? Um, so, yeah, um, when I when the penny finally dropped and I said to them, look, that's it, you know, it's over. And I started getting a bit more nasty towards them at this point. They then came back with trying to sign me into an NDA for 100 grand Um to, you know, not speak about them, not mention them, no social media, no suing them, just we'll pay you a hundred grand to like get rid of you, wipe our hands of you. So he, I said yes initially. And if I knew then what I knew now, I probably wouldn't have. Um, Cause I didn't at that point even understand the, the scale of the operation. But I just thought like, I need a hundred grand desperately to save this business, I really do. Like I need this investment, I need this money. I owe people money. I'm so stressed out because of it. I've I've never had a credit card in my life, ever. So can you imagine this level of debt? It's just not something I've ever known. And I'm not okay with it. It doesn't sit well with me. Every day I'm anxious. I'm not an anxious person. It's just, it's a horrible feeling. And, um, you know, I, I initially said, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll sign. No problem. But you give me a hundred grand. Now again, it was weeks after weeks after weeks. Oh, I, I've got to speak to my six GPs. You don't have any GPs. It's literally you and one other person and their wife. You do not have any GPs. So don't tell me that you need, you know, to speak to six people around the world before you can make a decision. It's not true. Everything you're saying is not true. You are the biggest bullshitter in the world. Like, I'm going to tag Amazon in this because he constantly spoke about Amazon. Like, oh yeah, I'm at Amazon today. Oh, we've got this six-figure deal going with Amazon. Oh, we've got this with Amazon. Okay, I don't think that um, Jeff Bezos is going to be happy to be associated with you. So stop name-dropping Amazon. Another thing he did was start to tell me he could get us on the set of Batman. Um, oh yeah, okay. The whole purpose for that is because he was dealing with another business like mine who had links with Batman. So, you know, you can't just, you can't go dropping things like that when it's absolutely untrue. Um, so anyway, I said, yeah, initially, and I was waiting for this money, waiting, waiting. The money was never going to come. They don't have any money. Any money they've taken off people, they've clearly like embezzled or put into houses or put into an offsite, offshore fund, whatever. I don't know what they've done with that money, to be honest. it would It's just speculation. But what I do know is there's no money coming to any of the people that they're promising to invest in. And I've spoken to 10 of us. There are 10 people. Now, they're not all ready to come forward. You know, it is... Um, it's hard to accept that you've fallen for a scam like this and it makes you feel like oh my god like how like how stupid am I or it just it makes you feel a certain kind of way and I understand that not just because I'm ready to share my story not everyone else is and that's fine but I want to be the voice for people now um anyone else who this has happened to I like I want to be the voice for them and I want to see these guys sent down You know, weeks went by, still no money. So at that point, I said, you know, this deal's off the table. My relationship with the winery, by the way, is in absolute tatters. Um, We had such a great relationship previously, but because of how much time I've had to, um, you know, say, oh, I'll pay you next week, or can I pay you in a payment plan, or can I, you know, can I wait for this? Like, the, 
the relationship with them is just in tatters. Everything has to be paid for upfront. So I've gone now from being a girl who's never had a credit card to a girl with near a hundred grand's worth of debt. Um, and um, I'm actually having to close down our US part of the business, which is has broken my heart. We've invested so much money into it. And not only have we invested so much money into it, we've also like had so many big plans, you know, potential deals, all types that were just were unable to fund. So we've had to pull ourselves off the US, which is probably the most heartbreaking part for me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Um, at least like our UK division is still running and it's running well. For the past few months, I've taken this predominantly on my own shoulders. Like obviously Leo knows a little bit, my mum and dad know a little bit, but really it's been on, on me because I have needed to keep going for the sake of my staff, for the sake of my other business, for the sake of, you know, I, I've still got the general day-to-day -day runnings of two businesses happening whilst all this is going on in the background and it's just been so heavy and I've been filled with anxiety I've been you know sick no sleep um I haven't really offloaded to anyone until now really I mean I, I've spoken to Andrea who's my business coach who's been phenomenal as well um I've spoken a lot to Sam Sam has been just my rock through it all honestly like he's just been amazing and but other than those and even they don't know every little detail, you know? Look, there's multiple lawsuits against these guys already. Um, I just need to add to them and I need to get enough kind of proof to make sure that these guys end up in jail. The goal for this video isn't for a sob story. Um, it is a bit of a sob story, but I'm not trying to make it about that. Um, I am doing this to take back control, to feel empowered, to not feel like I have to be afraid to talk about this I know it's just a blip in my life um I know everything will come back around um I always remember Carly Jones went through a real shitty thing with someone stealing their business stealing her business and um when she came out and spoke of it I just thought wow what a strong like empowering woman who's just been like you know what fuck you I'll admit that this has been a shit show I'll admit that I fell for your shit um, but I will take back control of the situation and you will no longer control me. And that's what this is about. So yeah, this is for all of us, all of us who've been fucked over by them, all of us who have been fucked over by other people. It's time to, you know, come out the woodwork and say like, yeah, okay, that was shit, but we're going to get you for this and we're not going to let you do it to other people. And that's my goal moving forward. Um, these guys need to be under investigation. They need to be in jail. Um, I want justice for all the small businesses that go through anything like this. And, you know, I look at this now and I think, thank God I was on the other and other side of the fence. Like I was the one who they were pretending they were going to give money to rather than they were taking money off me. Like I am thankful for that, but it has really had a massive effect on my business. And now moving forward, I need to think about what I am going to do investment wise um, but you know, I will do that. Um, I'm swallowing my pride and I'm asking you to help me share this. If you know anyone who can give me advice, let's get, I, I just believe that LinkedIn as a community can really help get these guys, get them. When I think of them, I think of like the Tinder Swindler and Firefest, and I think, Maybe we should make a documentary. So if there's anyone who wants to make a documentary on this, I'm open to it. I've got tons of connections who would be, who have been through this journey and would also be open to it. I think people are at the end of the tether now and they're, they're ready to take these guys down. Um, I think the fact that these guys are living like a life of luxury as well, like all in million dollar houses um, and, you know, going out every night and, Oh, it's just mental, the life that they are still living, even though they're doing this to people and ruining people's lives. It's insane. Um, I've reported them to multiple places and I will continue to report them um, until people take notice. Um, please contact me if you've been in a similar situation. Let's talk. Um, thank you everyone for your support. Um, I know there's loads of 
multiple journalists like already in Australia and New York, which is where RJ is based. Oh yeah, and just to say, like for the very end of this, to drop their names, uh, it is RJ Bukaria. I don't even know if I've said that correctly. Bukaria, Bukaria, RJ, Richard J. Bukaria and Mark Spillane and Christy Spillane. These are the names of the people. Keep your eyes peeled. Don't let them get to you. Stay vigilant and um, thank you. Please help me share this. Please let's get this in front of the right people and let's get these people in jail. Thanks.